Today on Dead Dodge Garage, we go back in time to work on the power wagon. So come with me now on a journey through time and space to a land where there was like snow and stuff. Today on Dead Dodge Garage, the power wagon is finally back inside the shop out of the elements for the first time in dangerously close to a year. And yeah, that means the Barracuda is out in the snow. I have a ton of little projects to wrap up on this thing. And honestly, I have no idea how much I'm going to be able to get finished anytime soon, but any progress is good progress. I installed the factory gas tank. I don't know why I did that because I'm probably not going to use it. It's full of rust and it's kind of right in the way of dump bed rail. Look at this factory, early power wagon, spare tire carrier. For some reason, only two of the holes line up. So I got to do some drilling, but this is going to be awesome. I've only just realized I've been working on this truck for a year. How's that going? Yeah, about as expected. Anyway, let's make some air tank mounts. Nice. Nice. That's pretty cool. I have no idea what I'm going to do for, you know, an air compressor or any of that stuff, but the tank's on there. Well, I got distracted and started going after the headlights. Now I'm off to get headlight plugs. I made up this harness, which I'll run up into that bucket and then it splits off to the other side. And I mounted headlight relays, low beam and high beam. I've had these relays new in the box for a year. Oh well, they're mounted now. Oh, I need to get some self drillers and mount this thing on the firewall too. I mean, the zip tie is nice and all, but a little bit more security might be good. You know, I've been told power wagons are really heavy, but uh, I guess it's all in the nose. Eh, that's fine. Good opportunity to test out my transmission jack, you know, for safety. This is awesome. I could go even higher, but I'm nervous enough. I mostly did this to run headlight wiring through the easy way. But while we're here, let's try and get better than seven pump brakes. This entire braking system was new not too many years ago, so this shouldn't be too hard. Yep, there's the stock headlight wiring. Yeah, maybe I should have just plugged them in, you know? I'm sure it would have been fine. You know, I could be wrong, but I think this thing might have leaked some oil, you know, at one time. Uh-oh. Well, kind of has brakes, but uh, there's a problem here. I guess the uh, PTO winch drive shaft might need some servicing at some point, but that's fine. Well, I guess I'm restoring the headlight assemblies now. Did you know it's cold? Well, it is. Did you guys know hot things are really hot? Yep, it's a headlight, but does it work? Well, funny enough, initially the answer was no, but only because I used the factory chassis ground wires for the headlights and that headlight bucket was loose. As I tightened it, it started glowing brighter and brighter and now it looks like that. Not bad. High beam too. Nice. Yes. And it only took a year. Oh, I did take the liberty of throwing a crappy coat of paint on the other fender real fast. While I was at it, I also gave the rest of the front frame and suspension area yield rattle can resto. And it looks like crap, but well, it is black. Went ahead and hit the spare tire carrier with some black. That'll need another coat. So I've got two headlight relays there. Wires run from the lights to them. Two fuses added with battery feed wires into the relays. Kind of need to tidy this rat's nest, but uh, that's a future Jamie problem. Then I've got them grounded and I've got the trigger wires for the two relays run to the factory dimmer switch. It is a six volt switch, but running in this way, controlling just relays, it's taking almost no load. So it's gonna work just fine and live forever, probably. So to test all those circuits, add battery power. Yes. Yes! Oh, that's awesome. Well, it's not much for a whole day's work, but it is progress. Did I mention it's cold and everything's bad? Well, that's special. Today on Dead Dodge Garage, we learned what freezing rain means. I just love everything about this. In case you were wondering, the power wagon is not necessarily the best in the ice. For more on that, go see my video driving it in the snow last winter. Ah, oh, it sure looks good though. I need to get a new winch cable. Kind of like to start working on the bed again, but you know, that's a problem. Yeah, it's pretty much just as bad as I remember. King tide today. Super high tide. Neat. Oh, I forgot about the horrible gear noise. That's not good. Doing good though. <laughs> hey, look, 
it made it somewhere. So did Byron's Jeep, which is equally miraculous, actually. This thing is amazing. The real question, of course, will it start again? Of course. What is this poser doing? <laughs> oh, I love this thing, but it's bad. So bad. Well, now this is happening. Let's try and make this bed work. Step one, remove the wrong steps. Steps removed with prejudice. I pulled the filler neck too. I may reuse it, but it's not gonna work where it was. Oh, this is getting exciting. Look at that. It's actually kind of sitting on there. You don't know what you don't know. And I didn't know these beds are actually longer than the originals right there. I need to cut like two inches off. We basically got it lined up with the body line there. It's definitely sagging in the back. It's just kind of sitting on those hooks right now. I'm trying to get the angle on the bed right. Of course, the frame is like this because of all the ridiculous spring. Yeah, that's gotta be close. One peculiarity of this design is there's actually nothing to mount this outer bed shell. It just kind of hangs here until there's a bed floor to attach it to. I cut the rusty factory rails that would have gone over the factory one by bed floor, um, kind of flush with the side there. You can see I still need to do a bunch of cleanup with the grinder, but they weren't gonna do me any good anyway. The tongue and groove car decking stuff is probably gonna stick up to the top of that piece, I suppose. And then I'll have to rig up some kind of angle here coming down to attach it. Currently, the only things I have that that decking will sit on, that lip and that lip in the front, which is also kind of rusty. This is cool. Now that I have the bed kind of in place, I can see where the back of the step is supposed to be. If I do that, this right side front step turned around backwards pretty much lines up perfectly with the cutout on the front step. I've got a lot of work to do here on steps. For one thing, the steps that are on the truck now both hang down badly and they're bent badly. And the new ones I have to build here into the back are bent badly. I had to add the cutout for the spare tire carrier. It's not centered, let's just say that. It's gonna need some minor surgery. Maybe the best part of all though, we changed the tailgate. Ah, oh, it's so good. It's such a good match. I just wish the rest of the bed was. Man, what a difference. It actually looks like a truck. All right, now I get excited often, but I really am right now. Just look at it and listen to it. Take it all in. Imagine it with, you know, finished steps and spare tire and fenders. It'll be so good. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but not only do the headlights work, they work great. Kind of weird. But that's the magic of relays, I guess. Not bad for a day and a half, but plenty more to do. Yay! Check it out. It's running and crawling better than ever. Ah, it's awesome. Now watch out, there's like a tree three blocks away. You know, in a way, this 1948 Power Wagon is entirely responsible for my channel. It's the first project I decided to finally point a camera at. You know, it's worked out pretty well so far. That was December of 2021. This is September of 2023. And it kind of looks the same. It's been in the background of lots and lots of my videos here. Mostly sitting in the tall grass, rusting in that neighborhood. Growing tired of watching it rot in the yard, I decided to get it fired up again last week, only to discover it had lost spark totally. A simple file job on the points took care of that. And then it roared back to life on four cylinders. Until I came in and retensioned these cable ends and scraped them around and got it running on six again. But it still wouldn't idle. So I pulled the idle screw out, blew through the passages on that, and now it works again. It runs better than ever, in fact. There are still some drivetrain things that need to be addressed, admittedly. And I never have permanently mounted this fuse panel, but I'm adding circuits onto it anyway. We now have headlights that work with the factory switch. Now, unfortunately, the panel light switch is defective. I've been playing with it, trying to get it to come back to life, but it hasn't worked yet. If anyone knows anything about this seat control valve placard, I'd love to hear about that. I've seen it in a couple of these trucks. There's no lever, so I have no idea what it's talking about. 
a bouncy seat in this thing would just be magnificent because the ride is best described as atrocious. Anywho, yesterday, after I got the headlights working, I decided taillights might be a nice idea. So now I'm working on that. I made some quick and dirty taillight mount brackets. I've had these taillights since the week I bought this thing. Now they're bolted on here, which is great. The left side has the license plate light section, so I'm planning to make up a bracket to put it here-ish. I'm still thinking like that much of the rear springs is extra, but we'll deal with that in the future. If you're dealing with an ancient rig like this that just has no wiring at all for taillights, four wire trailer harness stuff works really well. Currently, due to the unique way the bed is mounted, there is no ground in it whatsoever. So I am actually running an individual ground lead from the front. The removable floor pan makes easy access for wire routing. Now these trailer color codes are standard. White is ground for some reason. Brown is running light. And then green and yellow are your turn signals, left being yellow. Now from the factory, the power wagon does not do turn signals. So I'm just gonna wire them together but it'll be nice to have them individual at the back of the truck in case I want to have this in the future. All of the switch gear in the power wagon uses bullet connectors, which is great, except that I'm running out of those. Someday I'll tidy and wrap all this wiring. <laughs> now because this thing's ancient, it uses a hydraulic brake light switch, which for some reason is here under the battery. Just a little inconvenient. Anyway, hopefully it works. Yep, that's taillight wiring if I've ever seen it. Split out more smells. Why not? Oops. Dang it! It's just like toasting a marshmallow. You only want it on fire real quick. And there we go. The level of mintness is high. I also did some future proofing here. I'm gonna have a real trailer hitch at some point and drag stuff around with this thing. And I'd like to have lights for that. So I've got the uh, left signal wire right there. I'll just snip them all and cut in a four pin. It's got running lights. That's beautiful. Surprise, surprise. The hydraulic brakes switch is no good. I did do a bunch of work to remove this uh, fuse delete. You get a glass fuse in here. So I'll cut some fuse circuits, one for that brake switch and one factory circuit for like a dome light, which I'll add later. These aren't vacuum wipers. They're electric. Wow. Maybe I should plug them in. Also, rats. All right, well, neither motor works. They're not even letting out smoke. They just don't move, which is unfortunate. So I guess I'll be rebuilding those someday. Also, the back sides of the switches are made out of like fiberboard and it turns out it disintegrates if you breathe too hard on it. I'm not so sure I'll ever get the smell out of here, but it's worth a try. Ugh. This is a really common cause of rust in truck cabs from this time. Now we're just getting too thorough. Remind me to order new seat upholstery. That would be really nice. Oh, wow. Maybe it will smell better now. Weirdly, I walked to the back of this thing a minute ago and the brake lights were on. Then I went and played with the brake pedal and they shut off. And now they just work. So that's exciting. Look at all this now. The floor is clean and I can actually see it. And all the stuff is stowed. I went ahead and toughened the front end up as well. We'll see if that actually hangs on there. I'm not holding my breath. Oh, there you go. Wiring's finished. Well, now this is getting way too good. So I guess it's time to just go ahead and restore the interior real fast here. Wow, it's slightly better. Did you know the floor and firewall are also supposed to be red? This looks pretty decent. I noticed this while I was cleaning the interior. It's just the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. Wow. That might be the nicest bit of paint on the truck. I'm officially excited about this thing again. It's really good. It always kind of worked, but I got the driveline brake working better too, which is awesome. I need that. Okay, sure, it's kind of right back where it was, but it's so much happier with life. Yeah, it's just getting cooler and cooler. All right, I think next it needs the rest of the bath, maybe a license plate, and I think it's time to drive it somewhere. I don't know what's going on over there. Air raid siren? Anyway, 
Let's wash the power wagon. Pointless? Maybe. Probably. At least I can get a layer of sponge off the bed. I've never done that. And I might work on what's left of the paint a little bit more. That would be nice. Ah, oh, crap. I forgot to close the windshield. Did I mention I fixed the windshield? I don't remember, but anyway, it's fixed. I think there's a gasket missing. Oh yeah. It's gonna be way too nice when I'm done. The satisfaction level is high. Oh boy. It's so clean. It looks way better. And the crowd goes wild. Man, this thing is cool. No! <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Did you know it leaks in here? Yeah, I was shocked too. Look at how well the parking brake works. I'm not rolling back on our slanted driveway. I'm totally blind. Worth it! The steering wheel is kind of coming apart in my hands. That is not ideal. Bath, done. Meanwhile, the brake light started fritzing out again and just sometimes being on and sometimes blowing the fuse and that's kind of a problem. So we're gonna have to address that somehow. Man, this bed looks good in the places it has paint and metal. Carefuling, because the junkyard numbers are just embarrassing. Uh, the rest of this is fine, but yeah. Oh yeah, like it never happened. As long as you don't look too close. I packed the truck in the shop because it's hot and miserable. And I'm trying to square things up. Oh yeah, I activated the air conditioning. I've known since I got the truck that there is pretty obviously a body mount problem. No two panels line up. The steps look horrible. Things are just goofy. This is all smashed, which is super cool. Anyway, I've only just learned what the deal is and how easy it'll be to fix. The front, the radiator and grill support is solid mounted. The rear of the cab is solid mounted on a metal pad, although it has a large bolt and a spring, so it can flex some. It sits on that metal and that's it. But here in the middle at the firewall, the cab's supposed to be mounted on wooden blocks, which is great until the wooden blocks disintegrate. So now, using a whole lot of science, I've jacked the cab roughly into the correct position. Look how high the hood sits. It doesn't scrape the fender anymore. Now all I've done is jack it up until that mount bolt is tight. Now I'm gonna measure the gap. Well, that figures. It's not an inch and a half. You know, standard nominal two by. It's two inches even. It's not quite as bad here on the passenger side because there's still most of a block in there, but it's definitely not ideal. So I'm gonna go ahead and make two. I'm getting the cab mounting figured out so I can get the step mounting figured out. This passenger side step dips quite a bit at the rear, which is a problem. Oh, well, there's supposed to be a wood block in there too, and it's just gone. Obviously it's been gone for decades, and someone has actually tightened this hardware already to try and get the step to be less bad. Didn't really help. Here's my thinking. Because the later bed has more material in that area, I need to cut it off. But I don't want to do that until I know where the cab is supposed to be. So. I'll square up and remount the cab. Then I'll have a line that I can follow rearward. As you may have noticed, the bed is actually low in the rear as well. Once the cab is secure, I need to redo this mounting and make sure the bed sits correctly. Then I'll probably straight edge a line off the bottom of the cab. Although as you can see, it's not straight at all, but I'll do my best. With the height and angle of the cab and bed figured out, I can get this gap right. I need the bed shoved almost all the way into the cab to get the wheel wells to line up. There's currently a belly in this front panel forward, and I may be removing it or coming up with another means to flex that that away. That'll allow me to move the bed forward as far as possible. Once the body is at least halfway square, I can start repairing the steps, mounting the rear steps that I'm adding, and other additions like that. My genius plan for this truck is to make it as useful as possible. Kind of like a, you know, a Swiss army knife on wheels. And to that end, I'm adding all kinds of recovery type tools, like this high lift jack, which I'll be mounting here on the bedside. I do have an ancient deck board from an old, old wooden ship. That's hopefully gonna be a bar top someday. It almost measures a full two inches, but not quite. So I think instead I'll use that random piece of lumber, chop off this ugly end, and then take two two inch pieces that way, turn sideways, It'll be perfect for mounts. Of course, my woodworking tools are there. 
Did you know I actually used to work with wood for money? All right, are you done? Jesus. Well, that wasn't so bad. I might never hear anything again, but I got the mount pulled out. World's worst paddle bit. Oh, well, you guys know how I'm super great at stuff. Guess I measured wrong because the two inch block wouldn't fit. So I cut off an inch and a half block and it fits perfectly. I don't know about you guys, but I really like how this piece has been busted out and welded back together multiple times. This was a hard working truck. Definitely wasn't like a Sunday cruiser or anything. It's on the list. And in side benefit, this wood is much harder. There we go. Oh yeah. The passenger door, definitely not great. So let's see if it magically improves. What's a little brake leak among friends? Well, totally different shooting match over on this side. Maybe this will fix it. Ah. Now the hood spacing is just wildly different side to side. The more I clean, the more weird numbers I find. There's the ghost of a 21, then the 35, which you can actually still see on the other side. And of course the 42 in the cab. I'm still trying to get that to come back without ruining it. I'm not holding my breath. My door actually just opens now. Oh, this is great. Every little change just adds up to make a truck that sucks less. I mean, it doesn't exactly drive amazing yet, but it's getting better, kinda. The windshield air conditioning is incredible. It works very well. Why don't they make them like this anymore? I just remembered I have no idea how much fuel is in the tank. Pay attention to that, that might be important. Oh, it stalled. That was fun. I had to roll bump start it like Colin kept doing with the Barracuda. I don't know how fast I'm going, but this really isn't too bad. It's not great, but it's not too bad. <laughs> Remember that brake leak? Yeah. So I ended up cornering a little fast and uh, the rear of the bed moved slightly. Oh sure, now yeah, it'll fine. Luckily, we do have Mr. Driveline Brake as a backup. Yeah, I probably should have checked that, I guess. Okay, obviously it still needs some things. For some reason, every time I walk outside today, it starts raining. Why? What did I do? Well, the truck's on the lift again. I've got it just barely with the weight held, which leveled out the frame, which normally sits this way. So now I can eyeball the bed and see where it's really at. I went ahead and put another inch and a half of block under the back, and I think that fixed it. Not that I'm expecting this to read level or anything, but using that to eyeball the body line, it looks about right. Of course, the line on the cab is curved, so kind of difficult to line up with perfectly. I've got the bed kind of sort of flush with it in the middle, and it curves out here. Then it kind of sort of lines up with the bottom of the bed rail, so I don't know, I think it's as right as it'll ever be. I'm getting educated. There's supposed to be a 3 8 inch fiber, rubbery, whatever, mount isolator pad thing on all four corners of the cab, underneath the wood blocks and between the two layers of metal at the back. I've got one here at the rear right corner next to my one really good rust hole. The rest are kind of gone. I don't think I'm dealing with that right now. Here's why I'm still looking into body mounts after yesterday's Triumph. I noticed that uh, the little short drive line was close. I wasn't able to turn it. Didn't know it actually hits. I don't think it should do that. Yeah, stuff's definitely goofy here. Look at that gap. And then look at this. Even though that side has the spacer at the back and it still has the wood block at the front, the cab floor is like sitting on the frame. For some reason, the PTO is like hard against this mount over here for the swinging pedals. I do think part of this is that the transfer case is slightly sagging at the back. All these little things just combine to make it messed up. This seems fine. Nothing wrong. Well, that should help. Maybe. That got slightly worse. But the cab's up off the step. So that's nice. And the little drive shaft clears. Although it's still very, very close. The underside of this truck is just covered in Zerk fittings. So I did go around and 
pump some grease in all the ones that would take it. They solid mounted the cab at this corner because the steering columns mounted to it and the pedals go through it and they didn't want the cab shifting around so much. The rest of the cab mounts are set up with springs to allow flex. The way these trucks were intended to be used, they were going to be in the field and climbing up and over whatever was in the way and they didn't want things cracking. Although, as we've seen on this truck, things cracked anyway. Bees! Horrible exhaust rattle noise fixed forever, maybe? Great! I made the passenger door worse and it doesn't shut right now. <sighs> Just all good news, you know? Hey, at least the hood clears the fender finally. That's good news. You guys ever heard of bodywork? God, all of these steps are just mangled. I'm gonna see if I can improve this somewhat. Man, I've worked this over quite a bit and it's still curved. All right, it's better. I took a random wood block off of one of these spare beat steps that I've got, shoved that in there, spaced it up at the rear even more. There's still a belly in the middle, but it's just gonna have to be good enough. Can't spend all day jumping on this thing. At least now with it vaguely in the right position, you can see how much of this bed needs to be cut because the other step's gonna come right through there. Just like the bedside, the rear step on the right side also gets clearanced for this spare tire carrier. Cut, cut, cut. <clears throat> yeah, perfectly straight, basically. Eh, it could be worse. Body work. I mean, it's better, a lot better. If you couldn't tell already, this setup's never gonna be perfect, but it would be nice if it kinda worked. Well, it actually works, so I don't think it's gonna get much better. Man, no matter what I do, I cannot get that driver's side rear corner down. I actually made up some blocking there that should be holding it level. Of course, that would rely on the frame being level. Oh, the tips that the bed are sitting on are not level and the driver's side's higher. Okay, that checks out. I used a two by four steel tubing section to anchor the front. I've actually added some screws to just kind of hold it all together for now. And after I leveled the bed by the lines on the cab, I checked the height at the rear. Incredibly enough, it needs to be four inches. So that makes sense. I'm still mulling over how I want to do this. If I want to try and make it dump bed ready in the future, if I just want to, you know, give up and make it a usable truck. Either way, I'm thinking another two by four section back here. The problem is the frame rails end before the bed does. And that is correct. I don't know that it's supposed to be this far behind the frame. And of course, that's not original. So yeah, everything's a little janky back here. From the factory, these bed sides screw down to the wood and screw to each other. And that's all that holds them together. That's not gonna work for me. I need some more strength. A bunch, but not nearly enough hammer work later. And a couple cuts. Oh, and obviously jumping up and down on it several times. Eh, it's starting to look like something. This is a really, really haggard front power wagon step, turned around backwards and flipped to the other side. And it's so funny, it's like they planned for this because there's a perfect cutout for the leaf spring. But I'm gonna have to keep going with the straightening because if I hang it off, you know, straight at that end, this is what it looks like. Man, someday I should probably hire someone who actually knows how to measure and cut things. I'm also going to have to cut this step for the stack. You got to have the stack. The stack's the best. Ah, I got to fix that rear driver hood latch. You know, it's just little changes bit by bit, but oh, it's making a big difference. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you stand this far back, it looks straight-ish. That's pretty close to the mid-50s bed. I just love everything about it. So good. It's even continuing to run again, that's weird. I also lightened the truck another eight pounds by removing all this dirt. New brake, lined. I just have to bleed them. Why am I not showing any of my work on this deal? I have no idea. I don't know how or why this random piece of scrap from my collection is exactly what I need to mount the license plate on this truck, but it is and it's pretty dope. I even lightly sanded this. Borderline too nice, but you know, still just crappy enough to fit the truck. That's a license plate if I've ever seen one. Also, it's a really low number. Don't worry about this. This is fine.
rusty nuts. The other free Loctite. It's a new day and I fixed the brake lights with a robbed switch from Tom's quality collection of parts. Uh... It also decided not to idle. Again. So I blew out the carburetor. Again. And after a while it got better again. It's got brakes. It's got brake lights. I don't even think the bed will fall off. So there's just one thing left to do, I guess. And that, of course, is drive it to a gas station, I think. I'm looking for a seatbelt that isn't there. I think the carburetor's going to need some more attention at some point in the future. Oh, it's still in low range. That's, uh, that's not a road gear. I just can't believe hitting the brake pedal does stuff now. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm strong steering. Quite something. It's still bad, but it's less bad. That's a bit of a process. I think I need to go through the carb. Didn't I say that? <laughs>
That poor transmission just needs to go before I totally ruin it. Look, it like drove somewhere. What a machine. Amazing. This thing is shaping up to be awesome. It still sucks to drive, but it's really cool. I'm pretty committed to keeping the flathead. It runs great, except when it doesn't. But I think a more modern transmission, probably a good idea. It still doesn't seem to smoke or anything. I did smell the faintest hint of crankcase vapor on heavy acceleration once. In general though, not bad. It doesn't charge for crap at idle. That, that's what the hand throttle's for. You'll be shocked to learn that despite having installed one excellent, perfect, flawless ratchet strap, the bed's still moving around. That's a happy flathead if I've ever heard one. I just need to deal with this fuel system stuff. I don't know how this thing doesn't leak coolant anywhere, but it doesn't. I shouldn't say things like that, should I? There's a long list of things I still want to do to this truck. Foremost among them, bedsides and steps. A bed floor would be a nice touch, I guess. I've actually got solutions coming for all of those things and more, so. I'm very much looking forward to all that. In any case, I've been working on this installment for a really, really long time. And I think it's time to just be done for now, you know? I mean, I can only keep power wagon clips sitting around on my hard drive for so long, you know? I'm gonna make it my personal mission to not grind any more gears the whole way home. We'll see how that works out. Deluxe model 30 whatever floor heater very efficient quite warm I should probably fix the fan back in the spot and no one died I'd call that a success all right thank you very much for watching hopefully the next installment on this truck doesn't take another 10 months but I'm not gonna hold my breath and remember if you can't dodge it uh, do the other thing